beautiful thing to for brethren to fellowship together in in, in love Amen. and in fellowship like this and just like a pastor uh, Jefferson said we, we thank God for the blessings in my family uh, my, my wife and my daughter God has been really good and uh, recently my wife just got a position as a post doctoral research uh, scholar at the uh, University of Maryland in College Park at the Department of Biology. So she is busy with that. And our daughter is growing by the day. You would not imagine, you would not believe if you see her. She is so growing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and God has been good. We have been involved in different kinds of ministries um, within the uh, Baltimore area. Um, especially in the Jessup area, and God has been really good to us. I was just sharing with Pastor uh, Jefferson um, the amazing testimonies we received from the jail ministry we started, where we minister to a group of men who are the pre-release center. And so just before they get out in society, we have the opportunity to minister to them. And, and God has been doing great things. As a matter of fact, last time when I was there, and after uh, ministering, one of them came to me and said, um, sir, I mean, when I leave, I'd like to go to seminary. And would you please recommend for me some schools that I may consider going to when I leave? And so God has been doing some amazing things. If you were in the news, I'm not sure if it was the recent news, but I just shared on my Facebook page about something Trump, President Trump just did. He had a press uh, conference with one of the inmates. He was, um, you know, uh, he was a robber, went to jail, and somehow, through prisons ministry, he was saved, and now he's uh, doing something great for the community. And President Trump recognized him. I said, wow, this is awesome. And so, you know, God uses the simplest little things we do to bring out something very great and amazing. And so we, we thank God for all of that. Um, next month, I have a, a, I'm, I'm preparing for a very interesting lecture, which I've been invited to actually as a guest lecturer from one of the universities in Baltimore. Um, I, I'm getting ready to go speak on the subject, the impact of um, postmodernism in the African and the African American church. And so I'm, I'll be speaking to a group of um, Doctor of Ministry students in the University of St. Mary's in, in Baltimore. And so I'm excited about that. And just be in prayers for me as I um, share my thoughts and as I reason with uh, some of these pastors and theologians as they get ready to graduate and get into society how how might they minister the gospel in the face of the realism the reality of postmodernism especially in the African American church and, and so that's uh, what I'm working on right now and God is God is good and I look forward to that so please be in prayer for me be in prayer <coughs> for my wife who drives about 22 miles every day uh, from our home to College Park, and she is not liking it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so uh, be in prayer for all of that. Also be in prayer for me. Um, so some of you already know I, for some reasons, which I don't have to go into the details, my services at the Prince George's Baptist Association ended. And so I'm no longer serving as the director of missions for the Prince George's Baptist Association. I now serve, I have been serving for the past year now as the associate pastor at Jessa Baptist Church, which is very close to the uh, Dorsey Run Correctional Facility, and that's why we started the, the jail ministry. But just recently, uh, the Arundel, the Arundel Baptist Association in that area, they are looking into filling in the position of a director of missions, and they have, they've asked me to consider um, stepping into the role. And so uh, just be in prayer as we think through that and as to, to know what God has in store for me, for my ministry, and for my family. Amen. Thank you for, for praying. Okay, uh, today uh, I'd like to share with you uh, from Genesis chapter uh, 13. Genesis chapter 13, verse 8 to 9. Genesis chapter 13, verse 8 to to nine, just as our sister did read for us. And if you cared for a title, I have entitled this message this morning, Beloved, Let Love Lead. 
be loved. Let love lead. Let love lead. Let us pray. Father, we pray for your power. We pray for your impact this hour as we seek to hear you speak to us from this text. Open our eyes, O oh Lord, that we may see you in these texts. Open our ears, Lord, that we may hear you speak to us Amen. in leaving echoes of the tones of heaven a message that will be relevant for us today. Lord, we pray, glorify your name through us Amen. as we have you speak to us now. In Christ's name we pray. And let the church say amen. 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 Now, according to the Bible, the Bible tells us that prior to Abraham's call, Abraham lived in a place called Haran. And Haran is in present-day Turkey. And so when God called Abraham, the Bible tells us that Abraham left his fa father's homeland with his wife, with his servant, and his belonging. And his nephew, Lot, also went with him with his own family and belongings. And the Bible tells us that as Abraham obeyed God's voice and followed God's leading, God richly blessed Abraham with livestock. And even his nephew Lot, who was with him, was also blessed with livestock. And we are told that as they journeyed across the Negev, the dry lands, the deserts, where fertile land was very scarce, because of the much blessings that Abraham had and Lot had, there was a problem. The land could not support both of them. And the Bible tells us that a dispute arose, a quarreling arose between Abraham's herdsmen and Lot's herdsmen over the land. Because their pasture, the, their flock was great. And that was beginning to bring discord in the family. That was beginning to bring in malice in the family. And it was not looking good at all. And the Bible tells us that Abraham, being mature and thoughtful and all, called his son, his, his nephew, Lot. And he said, see, in verse 8, he said, let there be no strife between you and me, between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are kinsmen. Another version says, for we are brothers. Another version says, for we are relatives. He says, verse 9, is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself from me. If you take the left, if you take the left hand, then I'll take the right hand. And if you take the right hand, then I will take the left hand. And in response to this wise decision from Abraham, the Bible tells us in the preceding verses, in the subsequent verses, that Lot chose the Jordan Valley, which was very green and well watered. And he left with his family and all his belongings. And there was peace. And there was peace. This morning I want to ask you a question. What do you do when there is no peace in your home? What do you do when there is no peace in your marriage? 
What do you do when there is no peace at your place of work? What do you do when there is no peace in your family? What do you do when there is strife between you and your children? What do you do when there is strife between you and your parents? What do you do when there is strife between you and your husband? Between you and your wife? What do you do when there is strife between you and a fellow member in the same church? What do you do when there is strife between you and your colleagues at work? What do you do when there is discord, that there is strife and quarreling between you and your brother or your sister or your uncles or your aunts or your nephews or your cousins? What do you do? Well, beloved in the Lord, allow me this morning to rebuke you with love. You see, because the the task of a preacher is to preach the gospel, to exhort, but to also rebuke, that we may be complete and be lacking in nothing. And so this morning, allow me to rebuke you in love. You see, God is not happy with you. God is not happy with you. God is not happy with you because of the strife that's going on in your home. God is not happy with you because of the quarreling that is going on in your marriage. God is not happy with you because of the strife and discord that goes on in your church. God is not happy with you. Because of the strife that goes on between you and your children. Between you and your parents. Between you and your uncles. Between you and your brothers. And between you and your sisters. And nephews and nieces. God is not happy with you. And the reason why God is not happy with you. Is because of your pride. You are too full of yourself. You think of yourself more highly than you ought to. And you think of yourself too big as to stoop down so low and reconcile with your neighbor. And because of your pride, your, there is trouble in your marriage. Because of your pride, there is no peace in your home. Because of your pride, there is chaos at your place of work. And so God is not happy with you. God is not happy with you because you are too selfish and you are too self-centered. You think only about yourself. You are driven by the humanist philosophy of me, myself, and I. You don't care how anyone else feels. You don't care how your children feel. You don't care how your parents feel. You don't care how your brother or your sister feel. And because of that self-centered attitude of yours, there is discord in your home. And God is not happy with you. But today, this very day, this very hour, if only you will hear his voice that speaks through me this morning. And if only you will not harden your heart, but allow him to transform you today. Something is going to change in your life. God wants to use you 
to bring peace in your marriage. God wants to use you to bring peace in your home. God wants to use you to bring unity in your family, between your brothers and your sisters and your extended relations. God wants to use you to bring peace, harmony, and unity at your place of work. Will you hear him speak to you today? Will you open your heart and allow him work with you and work through you to kill every seed of pride and self-centeredness that may have gingered in strife and discord wherever you are. If only you will open your heart. This text that we just read has a message for you which God wants to use to speak to you this morning. From this text, we learn two things that should inspire us as we deal with the situation of strife that we are currently facing wherever we are, based on our circumstances. The first is, just because you are a child of God, just because you are anointed, just because you are a minister, just because you are born again and Holy Ghost filled and water baptized, tongue speaking, does not mean that you will not find yourself in a situation of strife with your neighbor. The problem is not that you are quarreling with your wife or your husband. The problem is not that you are having a disagreement with your neighbor. That's not where the problem is. Because no matter how righteous we are, these problems will happen. The problem is how you are going about it. Because even Abraham, the most righteous man, the Bible says Abraham believed God and he was reckoned to him as righteous. Abraham was a friend of God. Even Abraham was in a situation of strife with family. The problem was not that Abraham was in a situation of strife. You see, because the truth of the matter is that you can, you can stop the devil from attacking. You know, but you can stop him from winning. You stop the devil from winning by how you deal with the devil when he attacks. You, you can't stop the devil from... Um, bringing in seeds of disunity and discord in your marriage and in your family, but you can stop him from winning by how you go about dealing with the situation. So what we learn from this text is that it's not only the unrighteous and the evil-hearted people who are involved in strife and quarreling. Even when you are righteous, you might be in a situation where you have to deal with that. But what would make the difference is how you go about it. Brings me to the second point which we get from this text. To make peace with your neighbor, to make peace with your spouse, to make peace with your friend, with your brother, with your colleague, you must learn to let love Lead. To make peace with your neighbor, whoever they may be, you must learn to let love lead. When we speak about love, what kind of, what love are we talking about? Well, the Bible gives us a very simplistic and clear definition and explanation of what love really is. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 8, the Bible tells us what love is. It is this kind of 1 Corinthian love I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the eros passionate kind of love. That's good, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the biblical kind of love. 
Let love lead you as you deal with the person with which you are having an argument with. Let love lead you as you deal with that spouse, with that brother, with that nephew, with that niece, with that colleague. What is this love? The Bible says love is patient. It says love is kind. It says love does not boast. It says love is not proud. It says love does not dishonor others. Love does not seek self. Love puts others first before self. This is the kind of love that should lead you. So when you are in a situation of strife, whatever the reason may be, do not be led by your emotions. Do not be led by your selfish desires. Do not be led by your program. Be led by love. The kind of love that is kind. The kind of love that is patient. The kind of love that is not boastful. The kind of love that gives others preference. That is the kind of love that you need to be led with. You see, to settle the dispute that Abraham had with his son Lot, the way in which Abraham triumphed over the situation and there was peace was that Abraham let love lead. Amen. You see, Abraham, if he didn't let love lead, the problem between him and his nephew would have escalated beyond reasonable doubt. You see, Abraham had every reason to speak and rebuke his nephew. First of all, Abraham was his uncle. He could have told him, but how disrespectful are you? Don't you respect family? Don't you respect elders? I'm your elder. I should choose first. You must give me preference and before you can come later. No, Abraham didn't do that. Abraham would have said, you know, I'm the man of God. You are not the man of God. I have the anointing. It's not God called but me, not you. And so you, you don't disrespect the anointing of God upon my life by trying to fight with me over what God has blessed me. Uh, Abraham would have said, you know, it, you, you, are, you are just tagging along. You know, it's, it's I who is on this journey. You are tagging along. And so you don't have to fight with me over these things. You have to submit to me and only have what I give you. Abraham would have said all of that. But you see, Abraham was led by love. Love puts others first. Love is not boastful. Love, love takes the back seat and gives others preferential treatment. You see, to ensure peace, learn not to take advantage of people in your life. But learn to give advantage to people in your life. Abraham had the right to take, take the advantage because he was the senior, because he, had, he was the man with the anointing, he was the friend of God, but he chose to give advantage to his nephew. And his nephew had the opportunity to choose the better parts. He chose the water Jordan valleys that was very green. When you let love lead, it may seem as though you, you are missing out. But you see, when you let love lead, when you, when you give others preference in your life and they are going ahead and it's like you are behind, don't, don't be carried away by that moment, momentary reality. Because in the long run, you're going to see the beauty of God's blessing in your life. Because if you read on and read on, you'll realize that Lord who chose the best part and went there was in trouble later on. And Abraham who stayed, the Bible said Abraham stayed there and said, Lord, show me the way to go. And God showed Abraham the way to go and Abraham was blessed. And Abraham had to come and bail him out of trouble. You see, in order for you to fulfill God's purpose for your life, 
Learn not to prey on other people. Learn not to take advantage of other people. There are some people who can only rise up by climbing on other people and putting other people down. But Abraham gave preferential treatment to his nephew. And his nephew was ever grateful for what he did to him. Beloved, let love lead you. Amen. Is there strife in your home? Let love lead you. Is there strife in your marriage? Let love lead you. Is there strife between you and your children? Let love lead you. Is there strife between you and your parents? Let love lead you. Is there strife between you and your fellow members in this church? Let love lead you. Is there strife between you and your colleagues at work? Let love lead you. Is there strife between you and other relatives in your family? Let love lead you. Remember what Abraham told his, his nephew, said, see, there should be no fighting between us. There should be no quarreling between us because we are family. Because we are brothers. So there should be no fighting between us. Beloved, in this church, there should be no fighting between us because we are brethren in Christ. Beloved, in your marriage, there should be no fighting between you and your spouse because you are one. Beloved, in your family, there should be no fighting or strife between you and your brother or you and your sister or you and your nephew or niece or cousin because you are family. Let love lead. The Bible charges us, it said, pursue peace. Don't wait for peace to come. Follow it. Follow peace. How do you really follow peace? Learn to be dead to self. Learn to be dead to self. You see, when John the Baptist started his ministry, he was very popular. And people knew him all over. When Jesus came in the scene, all of a sudden, John the Baptist's popularity was on the wane. And if John the Baptist was someone who was so concerned about self, he would have seen Jesus as a competition. And he would have, he would have perhaps start tarnishing his image. No, but what did he say? He must increase that I may decrease. When you, when you let, because if he did not do that, there would have been back and forth arguments between who is the better man of God, who is not the better man of God, who can perform more miracles, who cannot perform, and all of that kind of a thing. But when you let love lead, you give preference to the other person. And so you, you want the land, take it. You, 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 you want the property, take it. You see, sometimes in order for us to receive the most beautiful things that life has to offer, we must be willing to give what we have for the sake of peace. So I want to charge you this morning from the womb of God. For the sake of peace, let them have it. For the sake of peace, let them have it. You might look stupid because you let it go. Let it go. Yeah. And God who sees in secret will reward you. Do you know why Jesus made the statement? He said, of all those who are born of a woman, no one is greater than John the Baptist. Do you know why? Because of this statement that Jesus, John the Baptist did. He learned to give Jesus the chance. There is no one who has displayed such humility before God as John the Baptist, by allowing God to increase while they decrease in their life. 
Whenever you take the back seat because you are letting love lead, God will surely bless you. But whenever you allow self to lay hold, you want to claim your rights and you want to fight and fight, good. But the problem is that there is no peace at home. We have been called to promote to be promoters of peace. You can. The, the, the message today is you can bring peace in your marriage. You can bring peace in your family. You can bring peace in your workplace. You can do it. God can use you to bring peace. So open yourself. Learn from Abraham. And let God, let love lead you so that peace may rest so that peace may return among your children let love lead you so that peace may return in your marriage so that peace may return in your church so that peace may return in your community my prayer for you this morning is that you will humble yourself Take the back seat if you need to, just so that peace may reign. Let us pray.